You know, Andy, in our 22 years of friendship, this has to be the most bizarre thing we've ever done. I know. Our podcast, My Vagina Said What, is a podcast where we ask our everyday vagina listeners to pull up a seat at the best friend's table as we share our most personal and humiliating body stories. We are going to discuss all body things, like what exactly are we supposed to do with our pubes, perimenopause, our whack periods, and so much more. Listen to My Vagina Said What podcast on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. What? Hello, this is Laverne Cox. I'm an actress, producer, and host of The Laverne Cox Show. Do you like your tea with lemon or honey? History-making Broadway performer Alex Newell. When I sing, the Holy Ghost shows up. That's my ministry, and I know that well about me. That's the tea, honey. Whoever it is, you can bet we get into it. My guest and I, we go there every single time. I can't help it. Listen to The Laverne Cox Show on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcast, or wherever you get your podcast. Hello. From Wonder Media Network, I'm Jenny Kaplan, and this is Womanica. This month, we're talking about folk heroes, women whose lives and stories took on mythic proportions. Today's Womanican stands as a shadowy silhouette against the blazing horizon of the Old West. She's the most mysterious figure of the infamous train-robbing Wild Bunch— She's so hard to pin down that even her real name remains unclear. Let's talk about Etta Place. Etta Place might have been born around 1878, but we don't have her birth certificate or any documents from her early years to know for sure. In one version of events, Etta was the product of an affair between a British earl and a woman in New York. When Etta was young, her well-off father arranged for her to be raised in San Antonio, Texas, and paid for her to attend finishing school back east. Other accounts have Etta coming from a more modest background, maybe growing up in Denver, Colorado, or in Utah, or in Pennsylvania. That's the thing about Etta Place. Her story as a notorious outlaw in the Old West is fascinating. But what's captivated people throughout history is the fact that we don't really know who she was, or if she was an amalgamation of multiple women. Regardless, it's likely Etta Place wasn't her real name, but it was the one used on her wanted posters. In the decades since Etta's death, she's been portrayed in films and novels, and researchers have desperately tried to piece together her story. Along the way, many have claimed to have figured out the mystery behind the real Etta Place. But have they? Etta is remembered today as a companion to Robert Leroy Parker and Harry A. Longaba. The two were better known as Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. During this era in the 19th century, the U.S. was expanding westward. Railroad tracks snaked toward the Pacific coast. Trains carried all kinds of tempting loot for thieves like the Wild Bunch Gang. In 1899, a Union Pacific train was rolling through Wyoming when it was flagged down by one member of the gang. Then, a well-placed charge of dynamite blew open the express car. Another explosion busted open the locked safe on board. The wild bunch galloped off into the horizon with roughly $30,000. They went on to rob three more trains in the following weeks. In order to avoid theft, some railroad companies employed Pinkerton detectives. Sure enough, they had run-ins with Etta Place. The Pinkerton Detective Agency described Etta like this. Classic good looks, 5'4 to 5'5 in height, weighing between 110 and 115 pounds, with a medium build and brown hair. She was reportedly handy with a rifle and skilled in horseback riding. There's only one confirmed photo of Etta Place. It's a picture of her and the Sundance Kid posed together. They're wearing fine clothes and stern expressions. It was taken in New York City in February of 1901, while Harry and Etta were traveling together. Some believe it's meant to be the couple's wedding photo. There's no marriage certificate, but Etta sometimes went by Mrs. Harry A. Longaba, or Mrs. Harry A. Place. We do know that just a few weeks after the picture was taken, Etta and Harry boarded the SS Herminius, a British ship bound for Argentina. The Wild Bunch decided to relocate to South America, determined to escape U.S. authorities for good. 
Of course, the details of what the group got up to once they settled in Argentina are hazy. It seems Butch and Harry turned to a more modest line of work for a while. The two men operated a ranch on the bank of the Blanco River, near the town of Chalila. But they couldn't stay away from their life of crime forever. There are speculations that Etta aided the gang in two bank robberies while in Argentina. She was reportedly disguised in men's clothing. Between 1901 and 1906, we know that Etta returned to the United States several times. There are a few theories about why she did so. She might have been homesick and visiting family. She also might have been struggling with health problems that required her to return home for treatment, either appendix issues or maybe a venereal disease. There are other speculations that Etta had children during this period, maybe with Harry, maybe with a neighbor, but we don't know for sure. After that, Etta's story gets even more mysterious. The Pinkerton Detective Agency believed her to be alive and well in 1907, still living with Harry in South America. Conflicting reports have her living in San Francisco by that time. One of the Pinkerton's informants swears Etta, Harry, and Butch were all killed in a bank robbery gone wrong in Argentina in 1911, and even saw their dead bodies in the aftermath. But that remains unconfirmed. Some think the gang relocated to Mexico to fight in the revolution alongside General Pancho Villa. Another account has Etta growing old in the United States and dying in 1966, around the age of 90. In the early 1990s, a potential clue emerged. A woman in Utah commissioned a photo analysis of that fateful picture of Etta and Harry. Based on the results, she claimed that Etta Place and a friend of the Wild Bunch named Ann Bassett were one and the same. This theory was pretty exciting for researchers. It could mean that we have a fuller picture of the woman who was such a prominent but enigmatic outlaw. But the photo analysis has never been corroborated, and their timelines diverge in important ways. It's likely that they just looked very similar. Etta's life story as we know it today is a tangled knot, but historians and folklore enthusiasts continue to pull at the threads. Who was this wildest woman of the Old West? The stories and speculations surrounding Etta capture the thrilling uncertainty of American folklore. The rough edges of fact and fiction. People who live daring and dangerous lives outside the margins of historical record. All month we're talking about folk heroes. For more information, find us on Facebook and Instagram at Womanica Podcast. Special thanks to Liz Kaplan, my favorite sister and co-creator. Talk to you tomorrow. You know, Andy, in our 22 years of friendship, this has to be the most bizarre thing we've ever done. I know. Our podcast, My Vagina Said What, is a podcast where we ask our everyday vagina listeners to pull up a seat at the best friend table as we share our most personal and humiliating body stories. We are going to discuss all body things, like what exactly are we supposed to do with our pubes, perimenopause, our whack periods, and so much more. Listen to My Vagina Said What podcast on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. What? Hello, this is Laverne Cox. I'm an actress, producer, and host of The Laverne Cox Show. Do you like your tea with lemon or honey? History-making Broadway performer Alex Newell. When I sing, the Holy Ghost shows up. That's my ministry, and I know that well about me. That's the tea, honey. Whoever it is, you can bet we get into it. My guest and I, we go there every single time. I can't help it. Listen to The Laverne Cox Show on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcast, or wherever you get your podcast. Successful nursing careers start at Stevenson University. For more than 30 years, we've been preparing students to follow their calling to care. Our fully accredited program emphasizes personalized mentoring with state-of-the-art technology. And through partnerships with the region's leading health systems, our student nurses gain firsthand clinical experience and open doors to lifelong careers. It's a great day to be a Stevenson Mustang. See why. Schedule your visit at stevenson.edu slash tour su.